If you're new here, a little bit of context on me. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps and I try to document everything I'm building and share as much as possible with you guys on this channel. Today we're taking a break from the main apps I usually work on to build something just for fun. If I'm being honest here, I am a little bit burnt out. The app I'm focusing on right now, Subscription Monster, has been a bit tough recently, especially if you saw my last video on the pricing challenges I was facing. And while I think I finally solved it, I think I do need a break. So for today, we're going to build something just for fun, just to learn two things that I've been curious about. The first is Apple's recently released liquid glass design. And the second is their foundation models, which are AI models that run locally on the device. There is no pressure to release this at all. It's just an experiment for me to see where the technology is at. So I spent the morning thinking about what to build so I can experiment with this stuff. I wanted something simple, but useful enough for me to actually test out these technologies. And here's the idea that I came up with. It's a calorie tracking app, but with a twist. Instead of searching databases or scanning barcodes, you just type the food you're eating like you would in Apple Notes. So if you say something like an In-N-Out burger with fries, the AI in the background is going to try to figure out the calories and then display that to the right of the text that you just typed in. I think that the Apple foundation models would be perfect for this. They're free, they run locally and are completely private. And I think they should be good for simple calorie estimation. Once I figured out what I wanted to build, I headed to the gym with Cecilia. But if I'm being honest, I really was not focused on the workout because I could not stop thinking about this app. In between sets, I was reading articles about liquid glass. I'm probably one of the only people that goes to the gym and reads documentation between my sets. But we did get the workout done and then we did some cardio to wrap it up. The cardio went by super quick because I spent the entire 30 minutes looking at design inspiration and just planning out what I was going to build. And the second I got home, I wasted literally no time and immediately started working on the app. So I made some real progress here. We got the basic UI working. Let me show you guys. Probably a little hard to see because of the brightness, but when you click it, it is liquid glass. There's also this settings button here, which is also liquid glass. And then this settings page also uses liquid glass. Something I really like is that at the top, as you scroll, you can see this gradient fade type situation going on. I absolutely love this. I'm 100% porting this over to my other apps. The settings page is not actually functional. This is one shotted by Claude Code. Oh, but this daily calorie thing is functional. So you can set the daily calories here and it will show up at the bottom here. And this is a liquid glass animation where you can have elements coming out of each other. It's kind of hard to see, I think, with the white on white, but it is really good. There are haptics for this. And then this is hard coded right now, but this also does function as well. Burger. It's going to calculate and it's going to show the calories on the right. So if I type in something like egg, it's gonna say calculating and then it's gonna show some calories on the right. Okay, it seems like it's kind of broken here, but this is what it's supposed to be doing. And I even have this really nice animation here. Yeah, really proud of that. And then we have this logo here which is Amy the cat stretching. I know it's kind of dumb because this is just a demo app that's gonna be thrown away, but I really wanted to add some branding so it feels a little bit more real and I don't know, it's just a little bit more enjoyable to use. Something interesting is that I'm using Claude Code in here. It's actually not that great at Apple's liquid glass, but then when I use Xcode and I'm using the new intelligence feature, which this is basically Apple's version of AI coding. This thing is surprisingly well-trained at liquid glass. Actually, I guess it's not that surprising because it is Apple's own. AI and I would expect it to be trained on the latest documentation. Let me show you guys what this looks like. So if I say, how does liquid glass work? This is actually using my Claude account. So if you weren't aware, you can actually hook up your Claude account and it'll use your subscription to power Apple intelligence. And you can use a bunch of different providers. I think OpenAI has a provider as well, but this is pretty good. I didn't even have to feed in the documentation here. It just automatically knows what liquid glass is. This is something that Claude Code was struggling with. Anytime I asked it, actually, let's just try it here. What is liquid glass in iOS 26? Now it wants to search the web, which is cheating. I want to see if it knows what this is. In its training set, which ends January 2025, Liquid Glass on iOS 26 did not exist yet. So it has no concept of this. And I have noticed that even if I do feed in the Apple documentation or use the Context 7 MCP, it just does not understand this like Xcode Intelligence does. So that was kind of interesting to see. I've never actually used Xcode Intelligence before. If you need to use the latest Swift and Apple documentation, I think this is actually a pretty good use case. After the quick coding session at home, I headed to a co-working 
coaching space that I recently got a membership for. It's called Switch Yards and they recently came to Dallas. To be honest, I'm actually usually not working from home. I'm usually at a coffee shop or this co-working space now, but I love working from here because it's so aesthetic and everyone in here is just heads down doing work and I feel like I have to do the same thing too. With the UI in place with the liquid glass, it was now time to try to hook in the Apple foundation models to actually do the calorie estimation. I came in really optimistic about this because I thought that the models would be pretty well trained on this type of data. Is this, oops, is that better? Is that better? I think it was better. So I got Apple's foundation model hooked up. It was honestly pretty easy. It took about 15 minutes, but the issue is it is a little bit inaccurate. For example, if I type in and out burger, which according to the in and out website is about 300 something calories, the Apple foundation model says that it's around 840 calories. I'm not that surprised because I don't think these models were really trained for this purpose. I think Apple's models are more for summarization and small text-based tasks. Since that was so easy, I decided to try some other local models just to see how they stack up against Apple's foundation models. What I decided to do was use a library called LLM.Swift, which lets me download local models that could be used on device from another service called Hugging Face, which hosts these local models. And these are all open source models, completely free to use. They run offline, they're private, similar to Apple's foundation models. The models though are a bit bigger, which hopefully means that they're even better at this task, but most of them are not optimized to run on such a small device. So that is the pro of Apple's models. They are fully optimized for the iPhone. And these local models I'm about to test are not. The two models I decided to try were Meta's Llama model and Google's Gemma model. Gemma. Or is it Gemma? I actually don't know. Gemma or Gemma, this is the other one I decided to try. And this one was actually optimized to run on mobile. So I was really curious to see how this one would perform. Don't know if you guys can see this. This is actually the code for me to switch between these two different models. And I'm using the LLM.Swift package. And I'm basically downloading the model if it doesn't exist. And then I actually call some functions in here to generate a response and actually call the model. And I built this really nice, oh, let me just take this off. And I built this really nice switcher where you can actually choose between Apple's foundation model or the Llama or the Gemma model. And then you can just download it on the device if it's not already there. So let me actually go download. Yeah, the Gemma model is actually really big. It's almost two gigabytes. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And this is what this looks like. And then once it's done, I'll be able to actually use it. So I tried both of these models out and the accuracy did improve just a little bit, but there was a significant hit to performance. The Apple foundation models just ran so much smoother on device. The accuracy gains were not high enough to justify switching over from the foundation model. I think that the models are trained on nutrition data, but honestly, I don't think that was a huge priority to the model provider. So it makes sense why they're not performing that well. So the next thing I'm gonna try is using third-party cloud-based providers like OpenAI and Thropic, these bigger models that have to be hosted on an external server. Before we get into it, I do wanna mention that the way I'm building this is by using Claude code and I'm just dictating everything into Claude code, telling it exactly what I want. And if you've seen any of my videos, you know that that's my recommendation when you're using something like Claude code to prototype quickly, it's to dictate everything because you get way more detailed prompts than if you just typed everything manually. And I get a lot of questions on what tool do I use for dictation? And the answer is Whisperflow. You shout out to them for actually being a channel sponsor. Whisperflow is smart voice to text that works in every single app. The reason that I use Whisperflow is because it understands developer terminology really well. So when I say something like use state, convex schema, webhook handler, it gets it right every single time. And I use Whisperflow outside of coding too. I'm constantly dictating emails, sending text messages with their iOS app, and dictating directly into Claude. I literally write all my YouTube scripts by just dictating my thoughts into Claude desktop. It saves me so much time because typing everything by hand would take me like 30 minutes. It's available on the desktop, so you can use it inside of Cursor, Claude, or Claude Code like I do, but you can also use it on iOS as well. I'll leave a link in the description. I also have a code that gives you one month free. Technically, you can use Flow Basic free forever, and you already get a 14-day trial of Pro when you sign up, but this is an additional one month on top of that if you use my code. They did not have to do that. I'm the one that asked them, so huge thank you to them for providing that, but feel free to check them out if you're interested. Okay, so back to the problem. I've decided let's try not using local models. Let's try out these cloud-based providers because they're larger, they work on the server. Maybe they'll be more accurate because they could be better trained on nutrition data. So 
Um, so I tried the cloud models. They were definitely a bit better. Even something like the Gemini 2.5 flash light model was a bit more trained on calorie data, I think. It got generic things like if I say burger or pad thai, it did seem like it was accurate enough, but it was still failing things like if I put in and out burger, for example, it was not using the calorie data that you could find on their website, which gave me an idea. What if I could just feed a nutrition database directly into one of these models? So I looked up some nutrition database APIs and there was one that stood out called Fat Secret. And here's how I got it to work within the app. Actually using a small lightweight model, which is the Gemini 2.5 flash light model, to first extract the food and the portions directly from what the user's typing. And then I hit the Fat Secret API to get the exact nutrition data. That nutrition data is sent back to Gemini so it has all the information it needs and then it does all of the math and calculations depending on what portions are typed into the app. And if you look at the console, this is exactly what's going on. So it's breaking down In-N-Out Burger and Fries into components fetching the nutrition data API from the Fat Secret API, and then it's calculating everything based on the portion size. And it is way more accurate than relying on the training data set that comes with the base model. So if I say something like an In-N-Out burger, it gets it. And then if I say half an In-N-Out burger, it gets that. Now, the downside with this though, is that the Fat Secret API is extremely expensive. I reached out to the team and to use this API commercially, it's at minimum $1,500 a month. There is a free tier that you can use, but you have to put their branding on almost almost every single page, which I would rather not do if possible because I really love the minimal aesthetic that the app already has. But this is not a bad solution to the accuracy problem, way more accurate than the local models, which makes sense. To be honest, this is a pretty good stopping point. We tested everything we needed with Apple Glass and the foundation models, but I really feel like there's a better solution here. So I'm gonna take a break right now, brainstorm a couple more solutions and just see if we come up with anything. While I was grabbing dinner, I was still thinking about this API problem. The cost was just a little bit too high and I really did not wanna show the logo in the app. To be honest, this wasn't a deal breaker because the whole point of this project was for me to just understand the foundation models, which I already did, but I really did wanna see if there was a better way to do this. The co-working space is actually open 24 hours so after dinner, headed back to the co-working space since it was like five minutes away, just to iterate and see if there was a better way to do the calorie estimation. I had a little bit of a breakthrough here. I was doing a little bit of research trying to figure out what is the best model that is probably trained on calorie data because clearly the Apple Foundation models aren't that good, but I have noticed that other things like the Gemini models or the Claude models, they are a little bit more trained at this stuff. So I thought, is there a model that has this information kind of baked in? And I actually did find a model that was really good at it. And it's called Perplexity Sonar. What's special about this model is off the bat, it comes with search engine capabilities. When you call it, it also will run a search on the internet. So if I type in what are the calories of an In-N-Out burger, it's gonna look through all of these sources and it's gonna take all the information and try to answer the question. Happens to be really good at answering these questions about calorie and nutrition information. Now, instead of just being tied to the fat secret API, through the Sonar API, I'm able to use a bunch of these nutrition databases and even the restaurant websites themselves. And just from using it for a few minutes and testing it a bit, it is really, really accurate. And it's really smart too. So it's able to handle things like half of an In-N-Out burger. I'd heard about the Sonar model, but I really have not had a good use case for it. This is a very good use case for this model. Now, to be honest, the real negatives here though are the pricing. I'm using so few tokens that that doesn't even matter. To be honest, the thing that matters is that every time you call the Sonar API, they do charge you for the search engine requests. And the pricing right now is $5 for every thousand requests, which is way more expensive than I'm paying for the Gemini 2.5 flash light calls. So this is a bit of a pricey model, even though I'm not using that many tokens. But I genuinely think for the quality that I'm getting here, it is totally worth it. So if I do release this app, I will probably be using the Sonar API. It also has this really cool benefit where it shows me the sources that were used. So in the UI, I can show this really cool thing where when I show the nutrition info, below it I can show these were the sources I used to get the nutrition data. When I saw that on the UI, that was a big magic moment for me because it got me to trust the data a little bit more, which is a problem that I see with a lot of these calorie tracking apps. I'm really happy with how this turned out. The app's actually way cooler than I thought. I'm personally gonna be using this because I do wanna start tracking calories and getting my diet in order and this is just a really cool app to use for this. So this experiment to learn liquid glass and the Apple Foundation models actually ended with a pretty good app. It's really unfortunate that the Foundation models did not 
not work, but it was really cool to learn how easy it was to use and what the limitations of the model are. Now, I was not planning on releasing this app. I already have a bunch of other apps I'm working on. Subscription Monster hasn't even been released yet, but I have decided to throw up a wait list just to gauge, do people actually want this? And I actually made a post on Twitter talking about the app and to my surprise, it did actually blow up. Blow up relative to my other tweets. It didn't really go viral or anything, but there was a lot of interest in this. So I did throw up the wait list. So if you wanna join that, I will leave a link in the description below. The app is actually pretty simple and almost done. So I'm gonna try to release the beta a week after this video goes live. Honestly, this is exactly what I needed. I started the day pretty burnt out because I'm building a complex app like Subscription Monster and I ended the day by building another complex app, but that's okay because this was a really fun project to work on and I learned a lot in the process. I had a lot of fun making this video. If you did like it, please let me know in the comments because I can totally make more videos like this. If you like this kind of content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this one, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for spending the day with me and I will see you guys in the next video.